Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Andy Odovolt. And for the sake of clarity, transparency and disclosure, I'd just like to clarify that this is not a review session or review video like what I normally do. This is in fact a product placement or product promotion if you will. And that product in particular is my own brand. I'd like to introduce that now Andy Odovolt have a brand which is called AAV. And my first product here that I would like to talk about is this IEM cable, which I handcrafted myself. AAV Valkinas. All right. So you might be wondering why I am doing this. Why doing it now? Okay. Again, for the sake of transparency and clarity, as you would probably know, I am an audio enthusiast. I love music. I love listening to music. I love audio gears. Okay. And on top of it, I also love doing my own stuff, DIY stuff, like cables and stuff like that, okay? And I was thinking, why not? While well, edit, might as well I earn something out of it. Because to be frank with you, whatever that you are seeing me, yeah, whatever that I have done in my YouTube channel, I am not sponsored. I don't have any kind of sponsorship. I don't have any kind of affiliate deal. I don't have, pretty much, I am not earning anything aside from the fact that you are watching my videos and I get YouTube to pay me some amount of money which is always doesn't seem to be ever enough. <laughs> so I just would like to be completely clear on that. I want to earn something while doing something which I like. And one of the way to do that, one of the way that you can support Andy Odovolt and Dongle Madness is to purchase something from Andy Odovolt. So let's just have a look and talk about this cable itself, the product itself. Okay. The foundation of this AAV Valkinas is built on this particular product here. Okay. And this is a cable which is very well known since 1970. In particular, this is Canare cable. Okay. They, they have been in business since 1970 and they have been making quite a lot of cable, especially for audio, you know, industry. So, meaning that if you were to visit any of the audio studio right now or any, you know, high-end facility that does anything related to audio, chances are that you might come across Canara cable being used all over the place. And one of the reasons for that is that because, you know, they are known to be quite stable, both with quality and consistency. And I was thinking, and I have been using these Canary cables for quite a while also, since 2006 especially, doing all sort type of thing. But mostly, I have been doing Canary cable, using Canary cable for interconnect, okay, rather than IEM. So, I had this crazy idea. Hey, you know what? I do know that this particular Canary cable, which is the version itself is called L2B2AT. Yes, that's the one, okay? And have a look at the spec here, okay? If we look closer at the configuration of this L2B2 AT, it is a dual core or should I say dual strand copper cable. This is high purity Japanese cable made in Japan. And if you look at it, this 25 gauge cable, it is constructed of annealed copper. So what is annealed copper? Let's have a closer look. This is what Google has been telling me. Okay. What is annealed copper wire? Have a look at the green box there, the one that I, you know, I want you to focus on. This version of copper wire is more conductive than hand-drawn or spool wire thanks to the heating process. So this copper cable have an additional process to it, heating process, which then the result is a pad that allows electron to flow more easily. Okay, I will not pretend that, you know, I know rocket science or anything like that, but even from a layman's term, the way I look at it, okay, I understand that it means that the particle of electric or conductivity or signal would be flowing better on the material that this particular cable is built upon. Okay, and true enough, in actual usage throughout my time using this canary cable since 2006, and perhaps uh, many other DIY and audio enthusiasts, especially when they are you know, doing DIY interconnect, they tend to use canary cable because it is simply transparent, one of the best conductivity in the market that you can expect without breaking the bank. Okay, and if you are interested to know how I handcraft all this cable into this, okay, 
you can stay with this video because at the end of this video, I will show you exactly how I built this, all right, from start until finish. And let's just have a closer look at this cable itself, the build and the construction. Currently, it is connected to this Kinara Idun Golden, okay. And I like to talk about the feature of the cable itself. This is my number one cable, the first prototype, serial number 0001, okay. And it comes terminated with 4.4 mm balance. Of course, when I offer this for sale, it will be available also in different sizes depending on what you would like to order. Okay, and have a look here, the construction itself. I must admit that due to the fact that Canary cable was never designed to be used as an IEM cable, this thing is super stiff, okay? Look at this. Even in the original state, this is the thinnest Canary cable that I can find in the market which is this L2 version and I need four of them, okay? So I have tried several options and perhaps the best that I can think of that I have been able to construct was to use this sleeve method rather than braid method because if I were to braid it, it will be becoming even more stiff. So when you look at it, this is, you would notice that the length is short because I prefer something which is at around one meter. But obviously when I start selling this to users, it will be more than, you know, it's usually, it's usually going to be 1.2 meters. And have a look here, here. Okay, at the middle here, the Y split, I place a barrel here to protect the Y joint. And of course, there's ear hook here. Okay, this is also very rigid. So I would like you to know that, understand the very fact that this is a cable meant for studio usage. Okay, so definitely I would say that, you know, it does not present the kind of flexibility that you would normally see on most IEM cable. But wearing this is not an issue, okay? Once you are, or you can accept the fact that this is a stiff cable, okay? It goes very simple like this. I attach it to my Kinera Idun Golden here. Okay. Put it into my ear. Ear hook in here. Adjust this chin slider. It comes with chin slider as well. Okay, like this. And done. And you notice I also include this clip here. The purpose of this clip is to help reducing microphonic. Because as I noted earlier, this is a very stiff cable. So you can expect if it if you're walking around, it starts like flapping like this. What you can do is just clip it to your shirt like this, and it will be secure and it will not flap and it will not emit any kind of microphonic. So definitely. That is something which is very useful. So you are familiar with the concept of audio tuning, the concept of mix and match different type of component to achieve the kind of sound that you want. And one of the things that you can do is obviously swapping cables of your IEM or headphones or even speakers. And in this example, let's just have a look here at this Tanjim Origin, which I borrowed from Edmund. It comes with this silver plated copper or commonly known as SPC. If you're familiar with SPC, then you would already know that SPC tend to sound kind of a bit bright, okay, with the upper frequency especially. Yes, it does emit the kind of transparency, details and resolution with the imaging of the, you know, upper frequency itself. But to me, sometimes it can be kind of a bit, you know, fatiguing. It can be a kind of a bit sterile sounding and lacking body. So what you can do in this instance is that usually for this type of IEM or even this, uh, for example, final audio A5000, which is natively bright sounding in the upper frequency, and even this neutral sounding Kinera Idun Golden here, and especially this KZPR3, which I have reviewed not too long ago. And if you have watched my review on this PR3, then you would know that this PR3 is among the most aggressive with upper region, especially Pina region, from upper mid-range all the way to the treble. It is bright, okay? So, in order to tame the upper frequency, normally what you can do, aside from, you know, changing the tips and stuff like that, or changing the deck amp that you use, you can also tune it using copper cable. And in this example, I have been using this very nice cable from Nichek, which is Mix PP6N or FC Copper. And through indeed, when I use it with A5000 especially, and even my Hades MP145, and this uh, PR3, 
I was getting the kind of organic balance which I like. Okay, the sound is no longer offensive. Yet I am still hearing ample amount of upper frequency details, resolution, imaging, and most importantly, I am hearing also an improvement of overall density to the sound itself, the sound texture. Okay, so if that is the kind of effect that you're looking for, then definitely I would say that my cable here, Valkinas, is designed to do exactly that. And to test my theory, I have actually met my friend which is Ben, you might know him. If you frequent head fire, you might have come across have a lock here. He has been doing quite a number of review and highly respected among audio enthusiasts. Okay, but he has been like kind of like a bit quiet lately because he has been busy with his coffee business. He is doing a he's a he's a coffee man now. Okay. So I visited him and I just wanted to ask him, what do you think of my cable? And have a look here. Okay, Ben. You have been trying that for quite a while now. So just basically trying to gauge, you know, what, how would you describe it? You know, that cable effect on the IEM that you have tried. So you have tried, uh, let me see, Monarch and uh, Tanjim uh, Origin, right? Yeah. So yeah. in the simplest way that you put it, you know, what are the changes? What are, you know, the yeah. most immediate thing that you here. The, the lower detail, especially, I mean, um, the density. The, the first thing is, I, I, I can immediately tell that the, the impedance is lower. Okay. So the volume is slightly louder. It's, it's somehow it's louder. Okay. And then um, the image, the imaging is a it has more density to it. I I, I don't know if it's. Um, give it more body uh, you mean the texture uh, yeah yeah um, a bit of texture yeah the 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 base quality is punchier and um, the presentation is all different i mean i need to listen to it again so is this end game cable then no way okay <laughs> let me just put that up bluntly up front there are tons of other cable in the market right now all right you as the consumer will have the choice, the decision to pick, to choose whichever which is suitable to you according to your budget and preference. What I'm saying is that, you know, in the sea of options available nowadays, if you have similar taste to me, if you have similar equipment to me, which is largely like, you know, neutral or bright sounding IM, like this A5000 or even this Kinera Idun Golden or even this KZPR3, then you might want to try this, okay? And how much am I selling this then? Okay, let me just uh, declare this upfront. I intend to sell this at 50 US dollar, considering that you know all the amount of craftsmanship put into this and the kind of quality, the attention that I am putting into this, everything that I have, all my patience, I think 50 is a reasonable amount to ask for. So after all that, you are still interested to get this AAV Valkinas cable from me. Just reach out to me via my email, which is ndodervot at gmail.com or my Facebook, so that we can discuss on the terms and the condition of your purchase and also the configuration that you want.